That'll do for now. Like I said, nothing fancy, just enough to give me somewhere to put some stuff. Now, I'm gonna put down leadstone energy cell. Hell, no, I'm gonna start with the engines because they need to be fed lava. So start with the engines. Oh, oh, and that's another important thing I guess I should point out. Um, engines and machines require a new tool to use uh, to interact with them. Um, a crescent wrench from the thermal expansion mod will work on just about anything, um, but we had found a Yeda wrench as part of our little treasure hunt, um, which works as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And most wrenches don't have durability, which is nice. You don't have to worry about, oh, my wrench broke, so now I have to go buy, get a new one or anything like that. We're going to do that, and I'll just go throw that energy cell right there. Sound like something broke. Weird. Yeah, I lost Skype for huh. a second there. That's strange. And I'll just go ahead and throw down these other machines. Those will feed in there. And this can come out over here. And yeah, sure, we'll put it here and here. Okay. Just connect. One thing about these mods is it takes so long to load the client. That is true, um, which is, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's also kind of understandable. Um, it's especially, it's the textures. Um, even with, you know, higher end computers, Minecraft is unfortunately not the best coded game in the world. I know, shocker. Um, but it still causes some, some issues because of how much it's trying to load at any one point. So I'm going to wait to show the actual configuration of this until John's back in. Um, which apparently is now ish. Oh, ish. Start my quest for blood in the morning. <laughs> okay, what have you been up to over here first? All right, so I built another gazebo that looks like crap. But the point, <laughs> the point is, I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't like having things in my way. So these are the machines I just built. Over here are magnetic dynamos. If you right click on one, you'll see the interface. It's actually really simple. In the middle is a little battery internal. Each one of these can store 40,000 RF by themselves, which really isn't very much. On the right hand side is a little uh, tank full of whatever fluid you'd be asking them to burn. We're going to fill up that with lava. On the right hand side, outside of the little box inside, you'll see something that looks like uh, some blue stuff going through a tube. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the current energy output. Right now it's outputting nothing. It has a maximum power of 80 RF per tick, and it tells you exactly how much energy is being stored. Um, both of them are like that. The leadstone energy cell, if you click on that, has max input, max output controls, so that if you want to limit how much it will output at any given time, you can. And the center bar tells you how much is in there. The little gear in the green box on the right is configuration. And that lets you change all these faces on what they will or won't do. Uh, ah, okay. in, in just about everything in thermal expansion when it comes to uh, comes to power, blue is input, orange is output. If you shift and left click on the face, it defaults to every slot being nothing. It won't accept power of any kind, and in fact, if you look, these conduits now no longer are linking to the cell. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the left side blue, because that's going to input power, and the right side orange, so that it'll output power. So it'll take in power from your engines, and put power into our machines. Uh, the face, this face of it, the one that's facing us, is a graphical representation of how much power is in there. Um, and if you hover over it, Wayla will tell you how much power is actually inside of there. Okay. Now, what we can do to start with is just grab a bucket of lava and right click right on the engine. And it automatically, smartly, puts, power, puts that lava right into that engine until it's full, um, which is four buckets worth. And that's how I'm going to start with this, is just bucket up some lava and pop it in there. Oh yeah, there, there goes the dynamo. Yep. And I don't remember. All right. So. One on the left isn't doing much. Uh, all that power is going straight into the energy cell, or at least it should be. Uh, it's interesting that it's... Do I have that backwards? Is it orange as input? No. I don't think so. I think orange is... Hmm. Oh, that's probably why. It's probably actually putting power into this one on the right. The one on the left probably is too. 
and once it's full it might go into i don't know i don't know why the red the leadstone energy conduit isn't work oh that's why because i already had set to output duh so it's filling up these two machines okay now that those are full, yeah there's the power <laughs> yeah now that those are actually full because each of these now holds forty-eight thousand and twenty-four thousand rf respectively so that was just sixty thousand rf we just made in that short of time wow you can see how quickly it's going up inside of the leadstone inside of the battery now I'm just gonna pretend like i know how much rf does for us um rf is actually one of the better power modes that have ever been installed in a minecraft mod in you know, tales of old, each mod had its own power system, and there was really no way to transmit between them, okay? In just about every mod that's out there now, with the exception of like one or two, every machine will take Buildcraft Mega Jewels, um, Thermal Expansions Redstone Flux, or there's a couple of other power systems. But basically, they, they, they treat and they can understand the power system from everything. And Redstone Flux was really universal and really implemental, uh, instrumental to getting to that point uh, and getting to a point where all of them accepted everything. But now we have machines over here. So if you click on the pulverizer, you'll notice that it has a really similar config, just like the other two machines. Mm -hmm. That's not coincidental. They're all from the same mod. But if you click on the config, that's where the really important part comes in. You'll notice that inside the UI, some of these have colors. Well, the colors in the config correspond to the colors in the UI. So as I change things, you'll notice some slots getting different colored. Okay? Yep. Now, what I can do is on the right, we can set the output to go to the right of the machine, which is what's shown in this config, which means that if I then configure the furnace to put blue on the left, anything we pulverize will immediately get fed into the furnace and get smelted. Which means it will do all the grinding and smelting all for us. Which is pretty cool. Definitely. F further than yeah. that, yeah. Further than that, we can even put down a chest to the right of this furnace, set the output of the furnace to the right, and it will dump all the freshly smelted stuff in here and not get clogged. Okay. Um,. If we wanted to, we could put something like a hopper or something on top of the pulverizer and automatically feed in. But for now, I don't think we really need it. Um, it's pretty much enough that it's going to do this for us, and we're not going to run into any big issues. Like that little LED display on the energy cell. That's <laughs> amusing. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it just kind of gives you that info. So just as an example, I'm going to grab, oh, let's say a stack of iron ore that's in here. And that's going to give you an idea of how fast these things work. So All right. I'm going to grab a stack of iron ore. I'm just going to toss it in the pulverizer. And now if you look at it, it's burning 40 RF per tick, and it just ground one up. And it would have just output one into the furnace, which is now working. And wow. uh, it's smelting them down at 20 RF per tick into bars. End of the day, if you click on the chest, you'll see we're making a bar just about once every five seconds or so. Man, and with the grinder... You had to wait for it's the grinder. Eight, eight yeah. turns, was it? Eight turns, which turns up being about 24 seconds. 24 to 32 seconds. Yeah, that's a significant improvement. Yeah. Assuming we can keep up with the supply of lava. Um, which shouldn't be an issue because I'm going to build another machine that's going to help with this. Um, and this one's going to be, again, from Thermal Expansion. This one's called an Igneous Extruder. And that requires glass and a piston and a pneumatic servo. A pneumatic servo is a new piece. Uh, pneumatic servos we're going to get very accustomed with, I can almost assure you. Because pneumatic servos get used in a lot of piping networks and piping systems. They, let, right. they let you uh, configure what pipes will and won't do. Which, if you do anything with pipes, you'll find out very quickly is a very useful thing to be able to control. Because you can... Uh, use them to make pipes filter their inputs and their outputs so you can make sort of kind of sorting systems well, while you're working on that i'm going to go ahead and make that blood altar that goes there that goes there diamond blood altar are you still there yep i am still here i was trying to keep quiet while you were explaining your stuff as to not cross over <laughs> gotcha but 
That is amazing and terrifying. Oh yeah, I should probably grab that book that explains. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to be needlessly spilling blood. Oh, so you're not a bloodthirsty monster, you're just a blood-hungry monster? There's a purpose to the madness. Uh-huh. You keep telling yourself that. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that blood altar over there on the tower. All right. So for the guys who are watching my screen, huh, you just appeared to have teleported back to me. And <laughs> now you're gone. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, for the guys watching my screen, what I'm doing right now is I have set up the igneous extruder here. The igneous extruder with water and lava will make infinite cobblestone. Um, at a rate of two co one cobblestone per tick, which is about one every two seconds. So dumped a bottle of water in there, dumped a bottle of lava, it's now on, and it's going to just make cobble. What I also put on here are some item ducks, which, since I've set the bottom to export, will now put the, that cobble that it just made back into and top off all of our crucibles. The blood altar is in place. Let's take a look at that book. Okay, making your blood boil. <laughs> Craft blood altar. Rewards. Sacrificial knife and divination sigil. Okay. That sounds terrible. I mean, it sounds amazing, but it sounds terrible. So now you're a wife knife-wielding maniac is what you're saying. Oh, I should have brought a bed with me. <laughs> Maybe Did we take all the beds from this tower? No, there's lots of beds in that tower. There's a lot of people in there you haven't killed yet. Well, I don't intend to go to the areas where there are still tritons wandering around. Okay, here's a bed. All right, so i got to figure out what to do with this sigil. I can kind of guess what the knife is for. Blood orbs or blank slate? I would hope that you could kind of guess what the knife is for. <laughs> <laughs> Blood orbs are items that can be used to store life points in your network. The amount of life points in your network can be checked with the divination sigil. LP is used for most items in this mod to work. Bad things happen when you run out of LP when using an item. That sounds good. That sounds like you might sacrifice yourself if you run out of life points. <laughs> and to that, I would laugh. It might happen. Okay. So I gotta craft a weak blood orb. Gotta start somewhere. And on my end, I have moved the tanks near to the magmatic dynamos and I'm now hooking up pipes that will automatically route lava from the crucibles when it's ready over to the tank. Oh, but I ran out of pipes. Make more pipes. Always more pipes. Uh, one, sorry, go ahead. One disadvantage of doing my stuff over there is all of the all of our stuff is across the sea. <laughs> uh, yep. I kind of was wondering how long that one was going to set in, but <laughs> I didn't take as long as I thought it would. All right, so now i got some pipes here, which eh, it's right over a hole. It's not the best, but I'm not that worried about it. I can't believe we have 33 diamonds. Yeah, we found a lot of diamonds, actually, in some mining off camera. It's, uh, yeah. We yeah, found... that, that shaft over there turned out to be really helpful in getting diamonds. Actually, way more than I was expecting it to be. I, I thought it was just going to be like, oh, okay, you know, sure, whatever. We'll go grab a couple of materials, and nope, it worked great.